Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial Functional Analysis Class Number 21. In this video, we prove a theorem, Open Mapping Theorem, which is very 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 important theorem. Theorem number Class Number 21. Let us see the statement. If capital B and B dash B to Banach spaces and if capital T is a continuous linear transformation from B on to B dash, then capital T is an open mapping. Okay, we prove this theorem. Let B and B dash be any two Banach spaces. Let capital B and B dash B to Banach spaces b2 banach spaces and capital t maps b into b dash is a continuous continuous linear transformation and on to it is continuous linear transformation and on to also we have to prove that we have to prove that capital T is an open mapping capital T is an open mapping that is to prove that capital T is open mapping we prove that we prove that T of G is an open set T of G is an open set in B dash whenever G is open set in B whenever G is open set in B. So our aim is to show that T is an open mapping. Our aim is to show that T is an open mapping. Our aim is to show that T is an open mapping. So now it is equivalent to prove that T of G is an open set in B dash whenever G is an open set in capital B. So right to prove this to prove this let us take y is an element of t of g let y be an element y be an element of t of g then by definition of t by definition of t because t is on to t is on to implies as there exists an element x belongs to capital G such that T of x is equals to y. T of x is equals to y. And since x belongs to capital G and G is open set. G is open set. It means, it means there exists an open sphere. There exists an open sphere. There exists an open sphere with the center at x with center x and radius small r and radius small r that is that is sr of x which is equals to s of x comma r is subset to capital c this is nothing but the definition of this is nothing but the definition of open set this is nothing but the definition of open set but we know that but but we know that there is a fact we know that this s of x comma r this open set can be written as x plus sr x plus sr where where sr is an open sphere sr is an open sphere centered at origin centered at origin sr is an open sphere centered at origin sr is an open sphere centered at origin thus we conclude that x plus sr is subset to g let it be equation number one it is very clear x plus sr is subset to g by previous theorem by previous theorem you see video number 20 video number 20 there exists an open sphere there exists an open sphere s epsilon dash 
in g dash centered at origin centered at origin such that s epsilon dash is subset to t of s r all this is from previous theorem you must learn previous theorem or you write the previous theorem statement here that is explained in video number 20 there exists an open sphere s epsilon dash s epsilon dash in g dash centered at origin centered at origin such that s epsilon dash is a subset to t of s r s epsilon dash is subset to t of s r so right now we go through with this s epsilon dash can be written as add on both the sides y y plus s epsilon dash is subset to y plus t of s r it can be written as s dash of y comma epsilon means it is a sphere it is an open sphere centered at y having radius epsilon is subset to t of t of x because y is equals to t of x plus t of s r t of s r which implies s dash of s comma epsilon is subset to t of x plus s r because t is a linear transformation which implies which implies s dash of y comma epsilon this is not s y y comma epsilon is subset to t of g because t of g is equals to uh, from this equation number one sorry here from this s of x comma t of x is equals to y t of uh, x plus s r is equals to t of g where is g this one g is x plus s r is subset to g so t of g so which implies remember that i can prove again here x plus s r is subset to g therefore t of x plus s r is subset to t of g so please remember that so this condition implies as this condition implies as s dash is an open sphere centered at y having radius epsilon is entirely lies in t of g hence what it means what it means for each for each point y for each point y belongs to t of g for each point y belongs to t of g there exists an open sphere there exists an open sphere in b dash in b dash centered at y centered at y and contained and contained in t of g this equation means i write here this equation s dash of y comma this equation s dash of y comma epsilon s dash of y comma epsilon subset to t of g means for each point y belongs to t of g there exists an open sphere in b dash centered at y and contained in t of g contained in t of g this shows us this shows us t of g is open this shows us t of g is open hence this completes the hence the mapping capital T is open mapping. The mapping capital T is open mapping. The linear transformation is open mapping. Hence proved. This completes the proof of the open mapping theorem. One of the important theorem for examination uh, uh, in examination point of view. Keep learning. So and also before going to close the session, uh, I, uh, I repeat the definition of open mapping. What is mean by open mapping? A mapping is said to be open mapping. Here, T is a linear transformation from B into B dash. So, this set is said to be open mapping. If T of G is an open set in B dash, T of G is open set in B dash. T of G is open set in B dash. Whenever, whenever G is open set in B. G is open set in B. In other words, in another words, g is open g is open in the domain b in the domain b implies as t of g is open t of g is open in b dash 
thus we conclude that capital t is open capital t is open this completes the proof of the theorem one of the very very important theorem in functional analysis open mapping theorem you the question may be like this state and prove open mapping theorem including statement by had the state including statement is it is important by had this in the next video we prove one more theorem keep learning wish you all the best